But seriously, whose ass looks like that? This year, we've watched a lot of animated cartoon shows. So to close out 2021, we're going to be ranking 10 of the most popular fictional doctors from least competent to maybe the most medically accurate, but only 10 because if I ranked them all, we'd be here forever. Now, these are just my opinions based on my medical experience. So if you disagree with any of these, be sure to sound off below in the comments. I wanna hear from you. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Jordan Wagner. If you enjoy my medical education reaction videos and other stuff that you see here on this channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. Let's dive right in. Coming in, number 10, Lionel Real Doctor from Cyanide and Happiness. Despite his name, Real Doctor, this man couldn't be further from holding any type of medical degree. Lionel has a printed medical degree hung on the wall and is actually a convicted felon. I remember one time he was delivering a baby and the police came knocking on the delivery room door and real doctor actually crawled inside the patient's uterus to hide. Other times he tries to sell drugs to patients. The whole thing doesn't make sense. Cyanide and happiness is hilarious. Great writing, but an F minus on the medical accuracy. I hope we're all in agreement on this one. If not, definitely let me know. Number nine, this doctor may have just gotten his degree from wish.com or his favorite e-commerce business, quote, the Chinese black market. Dr. Kuzniak from Brickleberry has a strange fetish or desire for medical malpractice. He also has some shady criminal intentions like buying organs from the black market or as Kuzniak likes to call it, supporting small business. While some of Kuzniak's procedures would be downright groundbreaking, under different circumstances, the way in which he implements these tactics makes him a criminal. I remember one time he was promoting a worthless and ineffective hair tonic product, a growth hormone called Growitol. Growitol. Ask your doctor if Growitol's right for you. Which evidently is made up of tiger sperm. Need I say more? He also routinely puts down his patients with lethal injection if they do not have any contacts or friends or family members to drive them home from the hospital after a medical procedure. He is still proud of his own work and himself. He also gets an F in my book. Number eight cartoon doctor, Dr. Zoidberg from Futurama. He's not really a doctor anyone should trust for reasons like, I don't know, he doesn't know human anatomy, but that doesn't stop him from continuing to practice medicine, can save his friends with quick surgery, but it's often, let's say, not the best outcome. For example, in one episode, he keeps Fry alive by attaching his head to Amy's body. However, I do believe he performed a successful rhinoplasty on his human girlfriend one time. Zoidberg is also implied to be the poorest doctor ever since he eats garbage, he lives in a dumpster, and still manages to work. But for all those reasons, I suppose that's why we like him for this show. Number seven, Dr. Nick Rivera from The Simpsons. If your HMO designates Dr. Nick as your primary care physician, Run. Dr. Nick is the first doctor on our list who allegedly has a medical degree. And I use that term loosely. Aside from spending too much of his time using his ability to acquire prescription drugs to impress a succession of attractive women, he does in fact have a medical degree, but from Hollywood Upstairs Medical College. What the heck is that? Dr. Nick is willing to operate on patients for a low price, but you wouldn't actually trust him to operate on your body. Actually, I take that back. Dr. Nick actually did perform life-saving heart surgery on Homer, but I believe he used his toilet cleaning gloves for the operation. So how Homer's still alive is the eighth wonder of the world. All that to say, I do have to give credit where credit is due. In Dr. Nick's strange lexicon of vocabulary, he did in fact use the medical diagnosis of skin failure when treating Grandpa Simpson. You're going to give yourself skin failure. Yes, yeah, skin failure is a real thing. Google it later. Was the diagnosis accurate? Eh. Nick was spot on with the terminology. At the end of the day, let's be honest. We all love Dr. Nick more for his, hey everybody. Hey everybody. And that's what makes him the most likable. Coming in at number six, good old Dr. Elmer Hartman from Family Guy. Dr. Hartman seems to be the only practicing doctor in all of Quahog, despite displaying a high level of incompetence. He's also not legally licensed to practice medicine, but that doesn't doesn't seem to stop him from specializing in every field of medicine under the sun. Monday, he's a family medicine doctor. Wednesday, he's an ophthalmologist. And by Saturday, he's performing triple bypass surgery. In one episode, he even reveals that he just Googled all his diagnoses or looks them up on WebMD. Hence, it's not entirely melodramatic of Peter Griffin when he felt violated when Dr. Hartman did his prostate exam. He also has a tendency to use shtick, misleading words which the Griffins presume 
to be a diagnosis, but it turns out to be something else and that they are medically fine. I'm not entirely certain if Elmer Hartman deserves the title of doctor, but I appreciate his humor. Number five, Dr. Doctor from South Park or as he was infamously known by the character's voice actor, George Clooney. I think I've come to the conclusion that this doctor is in fact blind. He's mistakenly replaced Kenny's heart with a baked potato. He's even denied care in the ER to Butters one time due to the fact that he's not a veterinarian. Butters was wearing some disguise, but the boys had a ninja star lodged in his eye. Like, come on. Aside from whatever vision problems Dr. Doctor is presumably dealing with, he earned his spot so far down this list for a particular instance. Do you guys remember the famous wheelbarrow balls? In the medicinal fried chicken, Randy Marsh pays Dr. Doctor a visit in an effort to obtain a prescription for medical marijuana. So can I get a referral from you? For what? Medicinal marijuana. But Dr. Doctor assures Randy that he's healthy. So Randy goes out of his way to get testicular cancer so he can smoke medical marijuana. What? But the doctor assures Randy that cancer is no joke. Bingo. Duh. This goes without saying. But big points for South Park for mentioning that. The doctor knows well enough to recognize the correlation between the rise in cancer and marijuana store, but incorrectly asserts that KFC is keeping people healthy. So, eh, I'll take it. He's not the worst doctor on the list, but then again, certainly not the best either. Number four, Dr. Alan Hu from Bojack Horseman. Now, I have to admit, due to his name and his black market drug dealings, I thought his name was a pseudonym, AKA British TV Dr. Dr. Who, prior to watching this show and learning about this quack for the first time. But Dr. Who's favorite part about being a doctor is writing prescriptions and the occasional house call drug deal with his experimental pills. Despite ethics making him a very sketchy and questionable doc, this doc may know his way around a pharmacy, but we're never really exposed to his other medical ways and practices, so to speak. Number three, the doctor from Paradise PD. Don't ask me to pronounce his name, I don't know how. But this doctor is a medical doctor who is very dedicated to his job. He is very helpful in aiding his patients when they're in need, no matter how ridiculous and over the top their problems may be. Unfortunately, this doctor is a bit of a dinwit and often his stupidity leads to medical malpractice. However, I'd like to think it's not intentional. Also, his diagnoses do need some freshening up. After discovering a bullet lodged in Gina's brain on an x-ray, he followed up by diagnosing her with be crazy disease. This is credited to her being shot in the head when she was younger and the bullet is still lodged in her brain. At the end of the day, this doctor's career is filled with more successes than failures, making him a decent figure in the field of medicine, at least for an animated show. Number two, Dr. Tate from King of the Hill. That's spelled T-A-T-E. Get your head out of the gutter. For full disclosure that I've seen anyway, we really never see any recurring doctors on King of the Hill. However, one doctor that stood out was Dr. Tate. Of of course, from the infamous diminished gluteal debacle. But seriously, Dr. Tate is an orthopedic surgeon who works at Arlen Medical Plaza. He appeared only in Hank's backstory along with his assistant, Gina. But seriously, who's looks like that. Dr. Tate, after examining a few x-rays, diagnosed Hank with diminished gluteal syndrome and prescribes him a gluteal orthotic device to help alleviate pressure on his spine. Kind of like a donut ring inflatable. The device exists. The medical diagnosis is completely broken. Mr. Hill just needs to hit the squat rack, but at his age, eh, maybe just a BBL will suffice. <laughs> Just kidding. Dr. Tate has a decent bedside manner, seemed like he knew what he was talking about, for the most part anyway, and even dressed Hank in a proper medical gown and only exposed his backside. Okay, drumroll please. The most medically competent doctor we've reviewed on this channel is Dr. Hibbert from The Simpsons. I have to hand it to him that he's noticeably less dysfunctional than everyone else on this list, hence the high honor. The man's a graduate of Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and a Mensa member, but I will say he does use questionable medical tactics, such as using a surgical two by four instead of general anesthesia or jiggling Homer's fat in hopes to determine his body fat percentage. At the end of the day, this Springfield doctor whose trademark chuckle <laughs>
will continue to make him a popular figure. But then again, I do kind of get the feeling he's in this for the money rather than seeing his patients survive. So I know some of you will be disappointed. I'm sorry, I know some of you will disagree with me, but I wanna hear your thoughts. Let me know which ones you think are the best or the worst. Who are the least to the most medically competent doctors in your opinion? And let me know your favorite TV show that you'd like to see me react to in the new year or one you'd like to see return on the channel. I read all your comments. As always, remember to subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button to get those thumbs flying up. Also, binge watch all the cartoon reactions we discussed here today right over here. Thank you so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.